Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. You know, first I gotta I gotta kick it off with this man. Nick Saban. He's retired. Like I just wanted to get your reaction. I don't know if you've done a reaction to this yet or not. Um, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, people have asked me, you know, him retiring, I got a fight coming up, so you know. Um you know, it's just like one of those things. It's like, you know, the day will come, but you don't ever want it to happen. But, man, my man's 72 years old. Um, you know, what hasn't he done in college football? Most championships. You know, if you played for him for, you know, at least three years, you played in a national championship. You know, he's got the most kids in the NFL. First, most first-round draft picks. You know, the, the, the list goes on and on, so. You know, I think the uh, the transfer portal um, kind of, you know, pushed him into retirement a little earlier than he even he would have liked. But, you know, he still got his hand in the pot. You know, he's still, you know, helping recruit kids and, and you know, helping the new coach do stuff. So, you know, he, he ain't just totally retired, man. He's not that – he don't got that kind of personality to just sit there and do nothing. So, he'll, uh, he'll still be involved. Definitely, definitely. He's got it in his blood. And I saw that you uh, you got some honorable mentions on the All Saban team. How good is that? Um, you know, I'm in good company. You know, yeah. there's a lot of guys that, you know, have won multiple Super Bowls on that list, you know, um, and have gone on to do, you know, really great things. So, you know, I mean, you just anybody who's seen a uh, Nick Saban team and, you know, watched the draft, the any NFL draft over the last 17 years, knows that, like he's putting guys out there and uh guys are out there winning warm buckets winners you know things like that so yeah i'm a good company it was good yeah definitely definitely and uh let's get to the fighting man march 2nd your return to action this fight was supposed to be in saudi arabia and now it's back to vegas some people are they complain about the apex man but there are some advantages fighting them. are there any um, yeah, for me, you know, I'm a brawler, so I like the little cage. I'm not trying to, you know, dance and, and, and do all that other stuff, you know, meet me in the middle, let's throw hands. You know, that smaller cage really entices the fight a lot. You know, if you look at, the, like, the statistics, the uh, the guys and girls who are fighting in a smaller cage, you know, the, the, like, there's 33% more finishes or some, you know, crazy, you know, statistic like that, so... Obviously, like you want the fans, the the noise, the aura, the energy of the crowd. But at the end of the day, that's outside my control. And you know, uh, for me, I like the smaller cage. Like I said, you know, perfect scenario for me is that they took that smaller cage on the road to the, you know, where they have crowds and stuff. So you know, it is what it is. You know, Saudi Arabia would be would have been cool, but. You know, I could just, uh, you know, buy a flight myself, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jamie Pickett, man, you know, thoughts on him and, and the fighting style that he possesses? Um, big, strong lefty like myself. Um, I do think I'm better everywhere. Uh, of course, you know, being as big as he is, as strong as he is, he has a puncher's chance. But I really like my chances in this fight everywhere on the ground against the cage on the feet where I like it. So, yeah, I think I'm better everywhere. And, uh, you know, I go out there and get this. With the how many, how many Southpaws have you fought? I fought quite a bit. Um, just off the top of my head, Machida, uh, Marcus Perez, um, Dawkins, him, uh, Hop in a tall switch stance, switch stances, Jocko switch stances. Yeah, I fought quite a few. You know, I, I like lefties. You know, it just, it, you know, it just, uh, it's a little bit easier to fight them, actually, I think. Oh, really? It's easier than, than the Orthodox? Yeah, I think so. Just because, like, the way I fight, you know, if you look at the Natal fight, you know, just slipped his left hand and came over the top. Dawkins, you 
know, probably the best striking performance I've had. Um, I guess because it makes me use, like, both, you know, my left and my right hand. With when I fight righties, you know, I kind of catch myself just trying to slip their jab and throw the left and kind of overusing it a little bit. This, you know, just kind of that mirror stance, it makes me kind of use both hands. For sure. Um, your last appearance, man, UFC 289, you went three hard rounds. Uh, what, you, what was your assessment of, of that camp and fight week and, and the fight? Um, I mean, you know, it's a fight, you know. Uh, Burial won, Burial showed up, Burial came out to win. And, uh, yeah, you know, fight week went well. Really, was really prepared for that fight. Um, loved training at the lab out in Arizona with John Crouch and uh, Randy. Um, it was great, you know. I uh, got a little banged up, went in there with a broken foot, and still, you know, got fight of the night. So, um, do I think I could beat him? Yeah, of course. But uh, this is not the nature of the beast, you know. It is what it is. And and the foot, did you injure it more in the fight? No. No, it was already broke. And then, you know, they said I could wrap my – I could use tape, and they said I couldn't use tape. And they said I could, then you go to walk out, and they're like, you can't use tape, you know. So it's, man, like I said, it is what it is. I'm not trying to, like, take nothing away from from Burial. Like, he won, he won Baron Square. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, so the foot, man, how did how did the recovery go after the fight? Uh, it's good, you know. Uh, feels good. It doesn't hurt, ache, or... You know, I, I don't even know. The only time I know I broke it is I can, you know, feel and see the scars when I rub my foot or whatever. But it don't give me no problem. I'm kicking with it, doing everything with it. So you know, I feel good. Very nice. And, and uh, I saw that, you, you know, between fights or between this last fight and this fight, you actually went out and, like, visited the troops and trained with the soldiers. How was that? Dude, it was an amazing experience. My whole family's military, so anytime I can give back to the to the, to the to the troops, to the military members, to guys in other countries who are away from home who love MMA. You know, a lot of those guys they're like they, they watch MMA, they watch UFC. And so they're fans of the sport, so they appreciate it even more than I appreciate doing it for them. So I mean it was just great to go out there, support them, you know, brighten up their day, get to roll with them, train with them and you know, just kind of boost their morale for a little bit, you know? And some of those dudes have skills, right? Like, they're legit. They can fight. Just some of those bases, they have, like, black belts, uh, you know, are stationed there. So they run, like, a little program uh, on base and, and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. You know, some of those guys can really give you a run for your money on your on the map. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I see you're always cross-training. You're always, you know – looking for knowledge you know what i mean you've been in texas florida you're all over the place like what were some of the spots some highlights for you cross training in the last um year? um i went to a b team and trained with nikki rod um um what do you call it um over the summer the ufc went to austin so i took the week uh trained with them went to the fight and uh you know texas is home so any chance i get any chance i get to go i go and, uh, man, it was great. It was, I had a blast, you know. Um, you really get to see levels of training when you do things like that, when you go out there and see and train with and, and kind of soak up the knowledge and feel, you know what I'm saying? That guy's only 235. I'm 235 when I'm not, you know, in fight shape, you know what I mean? But his 235 and my 235 ain't the same. Two thirty. I mean, he's a little bit, you know, taller. Maybe I'm like 225, 230, but um, looking at him, you would think he was closer to 250, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but he just has an impressive skill and probably even more impressive than that is his gas tank for his size, you know? It's just 10 minute rounds of wrestling pace, not jujitsu pace. There's a big difference between the two. And, um, that's one of the big takeaways is and, you know, the pace that these guys can push and that elevates my game as well, you know? 
So it, it's just good to go out there and see, feel, and experience, uh, you know, some of the best in the world. And, you know, they they open, they you know, with open arms, they let you come in, and, you know, and you can get rough with them and train hard. And, you know, they train hard too. So I know it takes it personal. And so for me, I like being like, I don't want to be the best person in the room because, you know, how are you going to grow? You know, and I know that, you know what I mean? You know, so I want to be the, I need to get roughed up, you know, from time to time, you know. And what is your training camp set up this time around? I'm not here in Birmingham. I stay at home uh, just because, like, you know, my kids are getting older. You know, I'm not chasing the belt anymore, you know. So it's just imperative for me to go out here, get wins, and, you know, I still make sacrifices, you know what I mean? But I'm not sacrificing their childhood. I can still make it to football games. I got to watch my kid win state in wrestling. Um, I got to, you know, he's at baseball practice now. I watched the other one do soccer and play basketball and stuff. And at the end of the day, no one may remember this, you know, Jamie Pickett fight. But, you know, they're going to remember when they looked up in the stands after winning a championship and, and seeing their dad up there, you know, smiling and supporting them. So, you know, at this point, at this stage, it's like what's really important, you know what I mean? So I gave it a run, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm going uh, to fight these last, you know, four fights and, you know, call it a day. Hey, you're raising some boys, man. It's great to see that. And, uh, you know, I want to ask you, what defines a man? I just saw a video today about something similar, like raising boys and, and like raising them into a man. What defines a man? What do you think? When, when do you think someone becomes a man? Um, man, responsibility, you know, being able to, you know, get things done, you know, to take care of, you know, a family. I'm not saying that, like, you have to have kids to be a man, but, like, I don't know, I think it's, it's like, a pretty, uh, not tough question, but, like, you know, my kids, they need to be men. They need to be, like, emotionally mature. They need to be able to take care of themselves, eventually be able to take care of others, you know, raise, raise a family if that's what they so choose. Um, People depend on you uh, as a man, so you have to, like, I, you know, I guess that goes on to provide um, all those things, you know. Um, I think it's more than just being out there going, like, you know, change a tire, or, you know, get a car to start kind of thing, you know what I mean? But all that is, like, under that umbrella as well. So, yeah. you know, I, I just want to – you know, my kids know that they're loved and supported and, you know, uh, that I'm here for them. Expectations, man. Are, do you have them for this upcoming fight or are you just free, like, when you enter the cage? Yeah, of course. Every time I go in there to fight, you know, I'm saying this guy's going to try and thump my face. You know, I don't want to get, you know, beat up. I don't want to have surgery after this fight. You know, it seems to be a pretty common theme. After my last few, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go out there and get it done. You know, I'm pretty, but fight ugly. That's kind of kind of the motto, you know? So, but I just got to go out there and make it grimy, make it dirty, um, and make him feel it. You know what I mean? I give him opportunities to, to for him to get off. So that's what I look to do. That's what I'm going to do. And, you know, we'll see on the second, get my hand raised, and, you know, then we'll hit the town, you know? For sure, for sure, yeah. You got to hit the town after the victory. Um, you know the the mindset of like, okay, I have four fights left. That mindset, it does it does it free you of certain things? Certain, I don't know, I don't want to say expectations, but does it free you from certain pressures? Um, I'm not really sure. You know, I want to go out on a win, on a winning streak. You know, so but I think it makes camp easier. You know what I mean? Because it's just like I said, four more reps, you know what I mean? You got it, you know, just, you know, just finish strong kind of thing. So um, I think when you kind of, for me, obviously when I started, when I first got to the UFC, I legit thought that I could make a title run, you know what I mean? Um, but, 
you know, that ship has kind of sailed. Um, luckily for me, I'm an entertaining fighter. People want to see me fight. So just go out there, be entertaining, and, you know, they'll remember you for that. For sure. You know, you've had some, some shocking moments, man. You've had some great moments in that, in that octagon already. So, you know, four more fights. We're going to see some more. Um, DFSI, they replaced USADA this year, right? So I've been asking the fighters, what's your experience with them? Is it any different? Have you had any experiences with them? Yeah, they're not nearly as professional. Like, it's their first time, too. Like, the dude came and tested me, and, you know, I was at the courthouse, you know, doing a business license and stuff like that. And uh, I was like, yeah, like, I'm not, I'm like, either come down here or I'll be home soon because, like, I got to get this taken care of now. Um, and he was only supposed to wait an hour and fail, and I would fail the test or it'd be a, a non show or whatever. And um, he didn't even know that. And he was like, well, since I didn't know that, I'll sit around and wait. He waited, no problem. Um, but I'm not even sure if I, you know, gave him enough piss for him to test, you know. At first it was no, and then, you know, I was just kind of like sitting around, milling around. He's like, man, you know what? I just looked again, and, you know, I think you're good. So, you know, whatever. Um, you thought I would have never done that. You thought I would have just sat there with me the rest of the day if they needed to. to and, you know, they drug test everybody, you know, so – they would have for sure um, did it properly. They would have came to the courthouse. It would have been a shadow on you. I've seen it yeah, at the gym. Yeah, yeah, you saw no, them follow that, you. <laughs> yeah, that that's happened. You know, when I before my last fight, the dude showed up as I was leaving training, and I was like, "Yo, he's gonna have to ride with me because one, I just finished training. You can't piss me for like another hour or something after training, anyways." So, man, this dude ran. I had to go to, like, UPS. I had to go, like, get, like, to the FBI building and get my fingerprints and background. This dude ran all my errands with me. Um, got some food. <laughs> they always refuse. Like, like, are you hungry? He's like, no, I'm good. I know he was hungry. I know he was thirsty, but he just wouldn't take my offer. You know what I mean? Oh, God. Hey, man. D did you deal with that in, in college? The DFSI, did they, did they do college football? Shoot, I don't know who is in charge of all that. Um, I think, like, the school hires, like, a, a company to, to drug test them, and then the NCAA has their own yeah. thing. So, you know, if you fail a drug test with the, with, with the school – the school does the punishment. It's nothing official, you know what I mean? And uh, But if you fail for NCAA, like you're ineligible the next year, and that actually happened to a kid. We played in the national championship in 2000, January 2010, the 2009 season. And he was maybe, I think maybe a sophomore, failed the drug test and was ineligible the whole next year. So he failed for weed, so it's like, not even like a super big deal. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. You know what trips me out the most is uh, seeing somebody get the, the 50 clean test jacket from USADA and then get then leave the UFC and then get popped for steroids. Yeah, like, I that two of them. blows my mind. But but at the same at the same time, like like I fought Thiago Santos and Christoph Jocko, they both tested positive. Yeah. Were they testing at the time they were in the UFC? I don't know. You know what I mean? But um, I could see how somebody could go fight for another organization where they're not getting tested as regularly and as frequently as they are uh, while they're on the UFC roster. And then, you know, they're usually a little bit older, you know, uh, things like that. So um, I see I could I, you know, not that I understand, but I, I see just because they tested positive then doesn't mean that they were using – or just because they tested positive now doesn't mean they were using it then. And that's just giving them the benefit of the doubt. Could they have been? Maybe. They both trained the same – at the same gym. So, you know, who knows? You never know. You never know. We'll never know, man, to be honest with you. But I um, know, I know. March <laughs> – March 2nd, man, UFC Fight Night, Apex, 
Eric, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. Um, man, all the best in this upcoming fight. I hope to interview every single fight until you hang it up, man. I just loved, I, I, I loved watching your career, dude, throughout the UFC. You fought so many right. times, short notice fights, jumping in on crazy short. Was it the Machito fight, short notice? Uh, Thiago Santos. Thiago, yeah, the Thiago Santos fight was short. Yeah, but you've had some incredible matchups, man. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you.